Welcome to Theo Trade. This is Don Kaufman. August 18th, 2021. 18 minutes to go to the cash close. And it appears that the Fed's taper talk is bringing some heavy volatility to the marketplace. The S&Ps right now are only down 27. Nevertheless, things are getting heated into today's cash close. So uh, we just saw a fast sell off from the 4430 all the way down to, uh, yeah, you pretty much pegged it 4411. We've been talking about that level just incessantly as of late. Let's break down all of today's market action and then give a couple of forward looking statements in this evening's video. As I was saying, the uh, the S&P is, you know, the S&P is tagging that 4411, which has just been an absolute marquee level as of late. In fact, uh, that's that's not necessarily a new level. If we actually uh, just take a quick glance at that, uh, again, that 4411 inside of the S&P futures specifically, it was uh, an area that literally we kind of resonated up against. It was the upper edge of the range for literally, you know, two trading weeks. We, uh, we just bounced in and around that 4411. Nevertheless, the 4411, happens to also correspond uh, in this particular circumstance to the lower edge of the expected move in the SPX. And uh, this is actually relatively pivotal because if you take a look back, let's say the lower edge of the expected move, this is how the option market kind of depicts risk for the entire week. When I say the lower edge of the expected move, to give you really specifics, it's 44.18 inside of the SBX. We uh, we tagged that yesterday, and it was it was like literally the low tick in the marketplace. That's a line that we drew on the screen, of course, last Friday, and uh, we tagged it. Uh, exact same scenario here in uh, in this afternoon's trade. We've got a little bit of a bid going on in the marketplace. But I'm going to say this, you know, in the last 15 minutes of the trading session here, okay, I would keep very close eyes specifically to the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ, once again, on a percentage basis, it's outperforming the S&Ps. And that is that is very, very specific in this particular case, because when we start actually breaking down the broader marketplace, you know, we've really lost a lot of the rotations in the market. I mean, net, net, you look down the screen right now, what do you see? A whole lot of red on your screen, other than the possibility, of course, of Tesla. And you can pretty much put your finger on right now why the NASDAQ is actually outperforming, if you will, the S&Ps inside of today's trade. And it's, you know, uh, how sad of an environment are we in when you literally have one underlying that's actually holding an entire index product uh, up. And that's because simply because Tesla has a 4% move. At the exact same time, though, take a look at the monsters of tech. For those of you that are unfamiliar with the monsters of tech, this is uh, this is a kind of a complex symbol that we built that's Apple and Amazon and Facebook and Google, Microsoft, all compiled into one lovely little, uh, little index product. Uh, nevertheless, taking a look at that, it broke to the downside, but it's also on a percentage basis. What's interesting about it is the monsters of tech are actually leading the S&Ps a little bit lower. Again, once again, taking a look at uh, Tesla on an intraday basis, that that's the linchpin right now inside of the NASDAQ. You know, I was looking around at some of the usual suspects over here. And, you know, even uh, even one of the other major linchpins inside of the marketplace, which has been NVIDIA. NVIDIA actually has earnings right after the bell today, seeing some pretty substantial sell side activity. Again, in this last 15 minutes of trade, I'm telling you, pay very careful attention right here to the NASDAQ. Obviously, by the time you see this video, it's going to be all over but the crime. But I would anticipate that the NASDAQ is actually going to accelerate, all right, some sell side activity into the close and actually take the S&Ps and the SPX under the edge of that expected move, which actually brings me to the uh, to the next point. So this volatility, this volatility in very large part is brought to you by FOMC Minutes. You know, if you take a look at the entire trading day, we were pretty much a range bound trading day throughout the course of it. By the way, there we go with the NASDAQ accelerating. Okay, it's like we've seen this movie before, but um, the entire day really came down to very, very tight kind of range day. The FOMC 
minutes sparked some pretty incredible volatility, but it's not exactly what you would have expected. We actually rallied initially on there. And again, if you missed some of those FOMC minutes, I mean, I'll just break it down. They're basically saying, yeah, they need to start tapering the bond purchases. Um, and that's, that's coming to a theater near you. Bottom line, they're going to start tapering those bond purchases, but that in no uncertain terms meant that interest rates were going to go up. Okay. Then there was, of course, discussion of inflation and inflation concerns. So the marketplace, though, it just didn't react like I would have expected. And the marketplace that I'm referencing in this case happens to be the bonds. I mean, the bonds, this looks almost like a perfect uh, doji star kind of candle. You would have expected, you know, at that point, the bonds going to explode higher or lower. Something out of the bonds. And the, uh, the answer we got was pretty much absolutely nothing in terms of movement. Uh, again, the NASDAQ knee-jerk reaction was to the upside, sold off. And again, you can see some pretty wicked selling coming into the NASDAQ here with, I said, uh, just over 15 minutes to go to the uh, to the trading session. And then there's, again, more selling coming into the, uh, into the NASDAQ. All right. So yes, you can say that the Fed definitely sparked some volatility in this particular circumstance. But again, it's not Again, what we would have categorically expected, we would have thought that the bonds would have shifted, causing the S&Ps and NASDAQ to, uh, to see some greater volatility. Here's another aspect really worth mentioning before we go any for, uh, further in today's action. We have a really interesting alignment, if you will, of expected moves. As I was kind of uh, delineating just a moment ago inside of the SPX, we're actually going to bring you to the SPX right now incredibly pivotal level that we're trading at at this moment in time. <clears throat> the SPX is now breaching outside of the expected move, okay? And it's rare that I ever get to talk about this on an evening video while it's actually going on. It's one of the reasons I'm recording right now. Once you start to break outside the lower edge of the expected move, again, the expected move is three lines. The center line is where we actually started the week. The upper line is the upper edge of the expected move, lower line, lower edge of the expected move. The expected move this week was only plus or minus 50 bucks. So lo and behold, I mean, the move that we're actually seeing today, it's only $36. I mean, people, let's put it in perspective here. We haven't even seen a 1% move inside of the S&Ps. This could get, uh, could get significantly worse. But the second you start crossing, okay, outside the lower edge of the expected move. This is where professional trade has to come in and they have to hedge with the dynamic of the marketplace. That means we have to sell, okay? And what do we have to sell? We have to sell S&P futures, okay, into selling. That's a dynamic hedge. Once you get outside of here, the risk starts to grow exponentially. So they're actually gonna hedge this move and they're gonna hedge this move considerably lower. Don't be surprised to see us kind of bounce back up into this 4418, possibly even an overnight trade or at some point tomorrow. Nevertheless, it's serious right now. And with 10 minutes to go to the cash close, these are like one of the days where you're just looking at it and you're like, hey, this marketplace, this this thing better, better, uh, better close. Again, the edge of that expected move, it's absolutely spectacular to look at on an intraday basis. Literally, we stopped on a dime, bounced off of it, and are, are seeing some selling into it. In addition to it, take a look at products like IWM. For IWM, which is the Russell, uh, this is where I actually look at auto expected moves. We are now definitively outside the edge of the expected move inside of the IWM. We're going to flip it over now to the financials, the XLF, which has been the kind of the epitome, if you will, of a breakout to the upside, breaking down right now, again, outside the edge of the expected move. And this is critical stuff. One of the most critical aspects, though, of all of this has to deal with QQQ. And the reason I'm actually bringing the QQQ up into this is it is still technically right on the lower edge of the expected move. As I said, the NASDAQ, that's going to be the pivotal area of trade the remainder of this week. Okay, The NASDAQ, if we're going to continue lower from here, the NASDAQ is just downright going to go for it, and it's ultimately going to take all right, the rest of the marketplace with it. We cruise over to the advanced decline line. That, the people, is the correlation coefficient you're looking for. No place to run to, no place to hide. This is actually what we would kind of term a, uh, a full court press. That's that kind of quintessential all down day. Sure, there's eight stocks trading to the upside. Many of them are going to be, you know, news related in this particular circumstance, Lowe's, which is news related. 
But that again, kind of a full court press into today's close, eight minutes left to go. And you're seeing exactly what we presented moments ago, that the NASDAQ was going to accelerate, again, some of that sell side activity. What do we expect for Thursday or Friday of this week? Okay, a lot more volatility. The bottom line is <laughs> hanging on to the edge of the SPX expected move is critical but you can see that we're losing it. As I said a moment ago, I wouldn't be surprised to see us come back up, revert back to the uh, to the 4418. But what's going on right now is, well, we're losing it a little bit. The next aspect worth uh, worth kind of mentioning. Take a look at the volatility futures. And there's something critical in the volatility futures. First of all, the volatility future contract did roll over today. Volatility's got a big bid under it. But I want to kind of leave you with a really important kind of impression here in this evening's video, and that's this, all right? I know, okay, that the Fed's got some taper talk going on, and clearly it's bringing some fairly heavy volatility. But there's one perspective that I think a lot of traders are kind of missing on this particular front. One of the ways that we often look at volatility, like, you know, let's let's bring the heat to this marketplace. And, and again, we're not even down like 1%, but it feels wild. Why? Because we just haven't moved much lately. But here's the aspect you really want to look at. All right, look at these SEP vol futures versus AK and Nove. Again, I'm going to say this again. Look at SEP, all right, versus AK and Nove. It's what we term contango and backwardation. This front month, okay, volatility futures at 2135. The next back month over here, which is AK, is at 2260. We are still a massive differential. Okay, between front and back month volatility, which what this kind of breaks down to is if you want to know if we're in the throes of something more serious, these have to actually invert. You need to see 28 day vol exceed 63 day vol. And you're going to probably know this by Thursday or Friday of this week. If we're going to go for it, okay, you're going to see this 28 day volatility future of the SEPs absolutely unequivocally explode. That's what I'm talking about. Will, you know, will taper talk bring heavy volatility? You want to see heavy volatility? You need these volatility futures to invert. You need to start to feel the fear in this marketplace a little bit. And again, most specifically, watch the NASDAQ. I've been keying into it just day in and day out. Just I've been relentless on this particular front because you would expect the NASDAQ at this point to be moving almost double with the S&P's are moving, okay? And on that particular front, not only aren't they moving double, they're actually moving less than right now the S&Ps. Look, in the next five minutes, this thing may actually play catch up. And again, the NASDAQ may actually go for it, but the NASDAQ, okay, that's gonna be in the dance floor for serious moves, people, in the next 24 to 40 hours of trade. Thanks everybody for joining us here at Theo Trade. Have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye.